Hey guys, today we are going to another barrel race. This one is about two hours away in Elsinore, Missouri, but before we leave, we are gonna steam him some alfalfa so he can eat it in the trailer on the way there and on the way home. This is my Hagen HG1 hay steamer. So we are gonna steam about two flakes of alfalfa-ish. They're pretty big flakes. That way you can have one for the way there and one for the ride home. Steaming hay really fills the hay up with some really nice moisture. I know I've been getting some comments tragically about soaking my hay before putting it in the trailer in case it were to catch on fire, which is very, very, very scary. And to anybody that's happened to, my heart goes out to you. So the steaming of the hay keeps the hay really full of moisture, especially since I'm going to be steaming it pretty quick before we leave. That way the hay has moisture, so it's like he's eating water a little bit there. It also kills any kind of mold or bacteria or dust in the hay, really reducing some allergies, which soaking doesn't quite do, but steaming does. And when you soak hay, you kind of get rid of some important nutrients, while when you steam it, the nutrient stays. So I'm gonna put some alfalfa in here and we will get to steaming. I'm really just wanting to steam enough for in the trailer on the way there and on the way home. So here's about two flakes. I might do just a little bit of extra just in case we were to get stuck anywhere or if I wanted him to eat a little bit more. So I'm gonna add a smaller flake in. That way we have plenty. Okay, I'm gonna push it down into the spikes at the bottom. I think that's what the steam comes out of. So it'll make sure it gets all through the alfalfa so they're thoroughly steamed for him. I have my nice jug of water here that's gonna go in the steamer part itself. But before I do that, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put a little bit on top just to make sure the top gets steamed really well too. Perfect. Now we're gonna fill up the steamer. Actually, I'm gonna put a lid on. Okay, now the lid is on, we're good. Now we can fill up the steamer. Okay, I have the lid to the steamer unscrewed and I have a dipstick here to make sure I fill up the steamer all the way. I would not want it to boil dry because that's when things catch on fire and I want to make sure I don't overfill it either because that is also bad. So there's a little water in here from what I steamed yesterday. So I'm gonna stick the dipstick in here and see where we're at before I pour any water in. We are at almost two quarts. The limit is four quarts. So I'm gonna grab my funnel. Now I have my phone. I am gonna put my funnel in here, grab my jug here, and start slowly pouring it in here. After just a minute, I will take the funnel out and use the dipstick to see where we're at. I like to fill it up. Usually steaming for an hour is not gonna use four quarts of water. I think it uses about one quart maybe, but I do wanna make sure there's plenty. Okay. I'm gonna see where we're at. We're at three quarts, we're almost there. Just do a little bit more. I'm only gonna steam for an hour. I don't worry about it being completely full, I just wanna make sure there's enough. Okay, it's almost at four quarts. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw the fill cap back on. And plug up. I leave it unplugged when I'm not using it, just for, you know, safety reasons. Now that it is plugged up, I am gonna look. This looks kinda heavy. I am going to turn it to standby for just a second, I think. I don't know, I saw them do it in a video, so now I do it. So once it's on standby for a second, I will put to steam and set a 60 minute timer. So when it's all done steaming, we will come back and open the lid. I'm gonna go ahead and grab his hay bag because it is still in here in his spot. That way we can fill the hay bag up right out of the hay steamer. This ramp is so heavy. Come on. There we go. Smells funky in here. Might pick it out a little bit when we get to the barn before we load him up. I use this classic equine bag just because the holes are really big. I find when I use the smaller holes, it seems to make him really, really mad. Now we have a camera, there it is, a camera we can watch him from. 
so I could tell that he was not vibing with it. So I got this hay bag with the bigger holes. He eats it faster, but he eats it happier. So that's what we use. He gets through it maybe just a little quicker, but not really. It works. All of my tack is still in here from the last race, so we don't have to move anything when we get to the barn, which is great. I just gave him the day off yesterday. Run Thursday, day off Friday, run today on Saturday. I didn't want to go work him or anything, especially because he did so, so good for me. Um, my master saddle, I've been loving it. If you're wondering where it's from, it is a master. Um, but I do have been struggling with it falling off the last like three times. It wasn't doing that, now it is. No matter what spot I put it in. So if you have any tips, let me know. My 60 minute timer went off, the lid is very hot. Um, the thermometer is in the green, which means it is fully steamed. So I'm going to get this open. As you can see, it is super, <laughs> it is super, super hot. So I'm going to let that sit open for a minute before I fill the hay bag. So I don't burn myself. It will be riding in the hay bag on the way to the barn, at least what he's going to eat on the way to the race. So the wind coming through the window should cool that down, but the rest is going to go in the stud wall. So I need it to cool down just a little bit. A lot of people say they love the smell of steamed hay. Um, I've never steamed Bermuda hay because all of mine eat alfalfa, but I will be the first to say I find the smell absolutely atrocious, but the horses love it. So I love it. It's just really, really strong, especially at first. I mentioned earlier how the race is two hours away. I pre-entered yesterday. When I pre-entered, I think there were like 30 people signed up and now there are 80 and we do not know our draws yet. And I'm hoping I'm a little bit earlier because it starts at seven with the Pee Wee, so it's gonna be a late night, but whatever happens, happens. So maybe they will post my draw number while we are on the way there. I have this hay bag that he's gonna eat out of, so I'm gonna try and fill it up and not burn myself. Okay. I might need gloves. Well, they are me. Okay, I have gloves. Um, they are gonna kinda work, I think. <laughs> we'll move quick. I have another hay net that is by Hay Gain to put the extra alfalfa in. Normally, like if you watch my videos, I put it in a trash bag, like a big black trash bag, but I fear this is gonna melt it today because it is, it's real hot. It normally takes like an hour to cool down, but we're speed running today. Okay. We're gonna get there probably two hours early. So I don't worry about him eating a decent amount in the trailer because he has time to digest it and everything before we warm up. So there is his bag for the ride there. Having a pal would make this easier. We're just gonna do it ourselves. I'm getting a steam face treatment right now. This is also skincare. There we go. The problem is getting it into this bag. Hey nuts are great, but they're harder for me to load by myself than that other hay bag. Okay, that is full. Both bags are full of alfalfa, so let's go get them in the trailer. Got his alfalfa bag hung up in a spot. One thing I love about this trailer is the two clips and that there's a manger, so if the alfalfa falls out of the bag, he can still eat it out of here instead of being mad that it's on the ground. This one is gonna hang out in the stud wall with all of this stuff while we drive until we use it. So I'm just gonna kinda like shove it like that, maybe? I don't know. When we get there. Today, instead of tying him into the trailer to haul, I'm gonna be using this quick release just in case anything were to happen, I can get him out super, super quick. So I'm just gonna put the quick release part on the little ring right there and we're good to go. He's already had his omeprazole, so I'm just gonna load him up. I just don't have a video of it. 
And he's gonna go right to his hay bag, of course. I have him clipped in to the cheek and I'm gonna take his lead rope off. That way he's just not stepping on it or tripping all over it or anything. And then I'm going to get the butt bar. This is actually two stalls. We just leave that panel back so he can have all of this room here when he hauls alone because he's just happier that way. So I get the butt bar up and then the doors. So I make sure all the windows are down. Everything's done, so I'll see you in two hours. He is happily eating his hay. I don't know if you can see him or not, but I'm gonna pretend like you can. He is really enjoying that steamed alfalfa. There you go. I'm gonna keep his lead rope in the truck with me because if not, I will absolutely forget to grab it if I put it in the tack room before I get the ramp down and everything. I do that every time, so I'm just gonna keep it with me in the back of the truck. We have made it to the race. I let him walk around with his head down eat some grass he got a good drink of water so now i'm just gonna let him hang out the race starts at 7 p.m with the peewees it's currently about 5 30 so i'm gonna let him hang out until i go to get on we're number 14 so we're not too early and thankfully not too late because there's like 90 something so i'm very thankful for that because it's already going to be kind of a late night do you have anything to say how do you feel about running today are you gonna run really fast? Okay. It's like six o'clock and I wanna get on to warm him up at about 6.30, that way I can get on with just bell boots, get off, put all four boots on, and then go run. So we are gonna start getting him groomed up. The first thing I'm gonna do is throw his tail into a quick braid. Um, it'll come out before we run, but his tail has been annoying the mess out of me when I'm going to put on sports boots or pick feet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in a loose braid to warm up in. And then once I get all four sports boots on, it will come down. But they, it was really getting on my nerves <laughs> at the last race. So we are just gonna avoid that just to get it out of my way. This way, when I'm going to do the Velcro on my sports boots, it is not constantly getting stuck in it because it makes me take way more time than I actually need to. I don't know. It just annoys me. Maybe I'm dramatic, but it's what we're gonna do. Now we're just gonna brush where the saddle goes. He has some weird like patches on him, but for the most part, he's not too bad today. I don't like obsess over what he looks like, especially at like little jackpots. So really, as long as he's not like disgusting, as long as where the saddle goes is clean, we are good. Yes, do you have a problem? Okay, I don't know why but his butt is always the most disgusting part of his whole body. So I am gonna run the brush up through here. Somehow there's always still dust on it, but I'm gonna give it an honest, okay. You gonna leave? Now I'm gonna get the other side where the saddle goes. I just got a ton of dirt in my mouth and the sun is in your face. I am so sorry. Okay. And he's usually like, I don't worry as much about dust being under the saddle as I do like if he had burrs or like a patch of mud or something. So I do try to get as much of it off as I can but it just like multiplies. Okay, <laughs> since he's put his butt right in the camera for you, 
I am gonna go ahead. He has like a nasty like poop stain or something. Oh my god. Okay. I think he wants to watch everybody warm up. Because the warm up's like right over there. He's being dramatic. I have a, he has a bunch of stuff like alfalfa in his mane. And I honestly find that this body brush gets it out pretty good. Why are you being so dramatic? I don't have anything. No food. Okay, I'm also gonna kinda get his chest where the breast collar goes. Down his leg. I'm gonna get like where the cinches go. Because if he has shavings or anything under his cinch, that's not very comfortable. Okay. He also always has like random crap down there. Now we are gonna get my saddle pad. And I'm gonna look at it really quick and make sure there's nothing like hay or alfalfa or any like, I don't know, debris under here. That could also be uncomfortable. I don't really know how stuff ends up under here, but it does. Okay, it's all good. Looks like my cinch is fell. Awesome. Now, I'm gonna grab my saddle. And if you're wondering what it is, it's a master saddle, and if you want one like it, or they have so many different options, you can tell them my name, they say he sent you, and you will get a little bit of money off. It is lightweight, so that helps, but I like to swing and just gently set it down on his back. You know, just not slam it, be nice. And then I will pick up the front of the saddle pad, and it's called tinting, but I will pull it up under the swell to get it off of his withers. It just kind of relieves that pressure a little bit. I'm just gonna loosely do the cinches. I don't wanna make them tight for him to just stand here because that would be kind of rude. So I'm just gonna kind of loop it through twice like this, pull it up a little and it's good to go. And then the back cinch, I'm gonna do about a hole or two looser than I would. I don't want it hanging too far down where he could kick and get a foot into it. So I am gonna put it up just one more. Master sent me this super cute breast collar. So it is the one we are gonna ride in today. I don't like my breast collar super tight. It's gonna be a little tighter with him standing with his head down than it would actually be. But I wanna make sure they are pretty snug and aren't just gonna flop around. Once I have it done up here, I am gonna clip it to the cinch. So now everything with the saddle is done and we can move on to his legs. And I think he got his legs pretty dirty just from what I can see under the fly boots. So I'm gonna grab the fly boots off and then we'll brush them and decide kind of what boots we're gonna wear. And today we're warming up in the grass. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick his feet because there's not gonna be anything getting packed in there in the warm up. I am going to run a brush over his legs. Ooh. super quick and his knee here because he has some dirt up on it. Now I'm just gonna pick his feet. This gives me a chance to look at them and get anything packed in there. This one's kind of packed with some dirt and really important to make sure there are no rocks poking into their sole before you get on and they can get all kinds of things in their feet so I like to just look in there and see what we got going on. And I'm gonna do this for all four. This one's also kind of packed in there. But it is all coming out really easy. Okay. You know, normally I'm all for proper footwear around horses. You'll notice I have on the chunkiest filas ever. And honestly, I feel like they protect me Typically, I recommend wearing some sort of like muck boots or like cowboy boots, but I feel like these chunky filas have all of my bases covered. <laughs> Once I have this hoof picked, we will decide what boots he's gonna wear today. Probably just whatever is the cleanest. It is so dang hot. I have sweat dripping 
down my nose. I think we're gonna go with the designer boots today. They don't look that dirty at all. Yeah, so I'm gonna pop these belt boots on him and then we'll get the rest, like I said, after I warm up. He's gonna pee right as I was going to put this on is when he decides to pee. Okay, cut the cameras. These boots are from Hot Head Stalls and my discount code, if you like them, is 85. I think they are really good. The price point is a lot lower than other brands, but the quality is still really, really high. So I do really, really like these boots and the pattern, of course, is super cute. He's gonna sneak in a quick nap before he goes to warm up. <laughs> I'm gonna throw my helmet on real quick. Before we go to warm up, um, it is a Troxel helmet and you're probably tired of codes, but my discount is Sadie. If you want a discount on a Troxel helmet, I really, really love mine and my strap thingy's messed up. Okay. So I'm gonna just go take him in the grass, walk, trot, look both ways, and then we will be back at the trailer for me to put his boots on and then before I run I'll probably try it a few laps and then it will be time to go. This is the only video I have of our first little warm up. He is kind of cross firing but since we were on grass I didn't want to fight too much and the rest of the warm up was really good. idea that after the Pee Wee there was a youth class so he's been standing here for quite a bit. I am gonna put on his leg boots and probably lope a few more circles and then go run and there were like 20 in the youth so I definitely miscalculated by a lot. So once I get these boots on I'm just gonna go put on his running bit and lope a couple more circles just because I thought it was gonna be Pee Wee and then the open and it definitely was not, but that's okay. Warming up and then tying up for a while is probably good because he was a little hotter today, so it kind of switches it up on him. I always just kind of brush out if there's anything in the boot. I don't really, I'm not too bugged by hair, but if there's any dirt or anything, I want it out of there. Anything like a big clot of dirt or something can move their tendons out of place if it's stuck under here. Their legs are super important, so you have to be pretty careful with them. So anything under the sports suits is a pretty big no. He already got his tail unbraided, or like, he got the hair tie out, but it's still, it's still serving its purpose. I can free his tail from the braid. There you go. Okay, now I'm just gonna put my helmet on. I forgot it in my last run, so I'm gonna make sure I have it on. And we're good to go.
City had a nice run of a 14.742. That's your new leader, 14.742. smoking run so now I'm gonna ice vibe his legs so what this does is the ice pack will cool his tendons down his legs down and then the boots that go over the ice packs are gonna massage kind of that coldness in and help blood flow and everything so I think they're great and pretty easy to use so I think they're really good for recovery after you ride or run especially the front legs will vibe for 15 minutes and then I will get the other ice packs out of the freezer when these are done and do his back legs. I really like to do this especially after having sports boots on his legs in the summer. Anytime you wear sports boots they're going to trap heat in there but in the summer it's already so hot and I think getting your horse's legs cool is going to be really really beneficial after every single ride and run this is not sponsored but it could be horse swear you're watching <laughs> all right i'm gonna leave him to vibe and then we will come back and switch to the back legs and of course he's gonna get a treat for doing so good he walked in really well i got nervous for some reason i've been kind of struggling with that um, before our run, once I turn to go, it's fine, but like he'll sink his heartbeat to mine, so it does not help us out, but once I turned around to go, my nerves calmed down quite a bit. to put on the back ice packs and then move the massage boots to the back legs. Okay, don't kick me. The darn tail missed me. It It is starting to get dark, but these really make their legs cool to the touch. Sometimes I like to run cold water over them before because I think it makes the ice even colder, but tonight I just did the ice packs. Okay. Those are gonna take another 15 minutes and then he's all done. So we're gonna go ahead and probably get his hay bag made. So when he's done vibing, he can just load right up and head home.
when we get back at the barn at like 12 a.m i just rinse the sweat off of him i don't want to leave that just to be gross on his back or under his stomach and then i cold hose the hawk that tends to bother him a little bit just to make sure we keep any sort of inflammation down he is really mad about this because he would rather go eat dinner but it has to be done Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun bringing you with me. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can come with me next time. See you soon. Bye.